I'm Elder Wendy from Faith Life Ministries. Um, I'm doing the 101 Healing Scriptures. This is our weekly meeting. Um, it's every Wednesday. We try to have it on air about um, 7 o'clock. When church is resumed, we will have it every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Um, I, I, if you'd like to come and visit us once we're open, you know, once they allow us to be together, um, I encourage you to come out and have a good time and fellowship and understanding. We usually talk to each other and talk these these uh, scriptures out, but you know this way I just get to talk. Yeah. So um, I'm from Faith Life Ministries. My pastor is Pastor Ken Martin. Um, he is what we like to call a Bible thumper. You know, he teaches only Bible. Um, we are a non-denominational church. And we'd like you to be a part of us. He he tries to almost daily or every other day have a message for you. So if you could check our Facebook, it's Faith Life Ministries. Um, and our uh, email is faithlifeministries.org. Uh, we are based in Dover, Delaware. Uh, we encourage you to watch it. You can go on YouTube and watch it. Um, there will be a little symbol that's, uh, I think it's an orange symbol with a little F on it for Faith Life Ministries. You click on that and you'll see all everything that um, we've posted, you know, if you don't have Facebook, because a lot of people don't like it. But um, we're here all the time for you. Um, if you'd like to uh, send us a letter, we're at 418 Rosedale Lane. Dover, Delaware, 19904. Even for prayer requests, you can go on our Facebook or send us a letter. Or if you just want to send us a letter and see how we're doing, good or bad, we'd like to know. You know, because we, we can't improve if we don't know the things we're doing wrong, right? Or doing right. So, um, so today uh, we'll start with prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this glorious day. Thank you for everyone watching, Father. We ask that um, they receive all your word today, Lord. We ask that this word is your word, Lord, not mine. We want, we want it to be your words, your wisdom, your spirit, Lord, um, your anointing on the word today. I thank you, Lord, for everyone watching. Um, I ask that they, Lord, I, I want them to receive what you have to say to them, Lord, and take it with them and proclaim your word, Father, in Jesus' holy name. And everybody says, Amen. Okay, so um, we're on Scripture 63. Um, we're this the 101 Healing Scriptures, number 63. It's uh, like I told you before, I always go check in Wendy because we would like to make it personal between my husband and myself. Um, God's word is, if you can believe, all things, there's a comment in there. If you can believe, all things are possible to those who believe it. This is Mark um, 23. It's also uh, Mark 11, 23 and 24. Um, talks about this. This is, um, these scriptures are on believing. I know we have, if you know Jesus, if you've received him, received him as your Lord and Savior, um, I know you have faith in him. But believing is, is a little extra in there, I want to say. Um, you know, we can all say we believe. Oh, yeah, I believe in Jesus. Oh, yeah, I believe, you know, he died on the cross for me. But do you understand, truly understand what the believing means? It has to get down deep into you because you can say I believe. You can say, you know, um, yeah, I believe I'm going to get a car, some, you know, a new car someday. You know, that's. That's not what they're saying. Believing is knowing, absolutely knowing, absolutely um, trusting that you are going to receive, that you are going to get. You know, let's use the new car. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get my new car. I know the car I'm going to get. You know, that's believing, saying, speaking. You have to be careful. We have to be careful of our words. You know, this is... Um, 
in Christ, we have to understand that once we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we've come into God's kingdom, you know, and his way of doing things. And every word we speak, every, and I'm going to say it again, every word we speak, he knows it, he hears it, and he takes it as your word. He takes it as what you're saying, you mean it. You know, and a lot of times we speak things that, you know, we don't even know that we're saying are so against God and what Jesus did for us. You know, saying, um, oh man, I'm sick. What do you think Jesus is saying? You're sick? You're sick? I was beat for you so you don't have to be sick. You know, it's almost a sin to say that. You know, I, I don't want to condemn anybody, if you, but if you really put yourself into it and really think about it and get deep into it, you're going to understand that when we say these things, they have meaning. You know, so that's why we need to watch what we say. Because if you really think of every word you say, has meaning to it to God just like you're speaking to him right in front of your face he's right before you you know and when you say man I can't believe I did that you know I can't believe right there you're saying I can't believe or you know like I said the six singers I'm poor you know I'm poor I'm always going to be poor you know no you don't say those things you know Jesus, when people say they're poor, um, to me, it's like Jesus became poor so we could be rich. How did he do that? He did it in many ways. But one way is his robe, his clothes, they had to be worth money. They had to be worth something because they were, were um, bidden over it. The, the um, soldiers were, you know, they, they were whatever they did, cast these things, these stones or whatever, to see who would win it, because it must have been worth a lot. It says that, that God um, clothed Jesus in glory, you know, a glory robe. So you you know his clothes were different. They were special, you know, and he gave that up. He became naked. He gave it all up for us. You know, you, you need to start thinking of things like that and getting into it. That's why we try to tell you to get into God's word and his understanding of what he did. You know, we can say things, but we, we don't think what we're saying. It's very important that we start doing that. When we live in Christ, you know, we want to be Christ-minded. And we want our mouths to be God's words, you know, and be, we are accountable for what we do, what we know. I can see before when we didn't know these things, but now that we know it, we're accountable for it. You know, and I just want to, I'm trying, you know, nobody's perfect. You know, we all know none of us are perfect, but you know what? We can, we need to try to increase ourselves and better ourselves and better our words and better our lives. You know, that's what we we do in Christ. You know, when he's when we're trying to be Christ like, that means we're trying to be, you know, a better person. You know, try to walk like he walked. Love everybody. You know, that's what we're we're trying to do. Okay, I don't know how I got off on that, but <laughs> so all right, I'm gonna read the scripture. This is about um where the scripture falls in is uh, a boy is healed. Now this boy, well, we'll talk about it afterwards. I'll read the scripture. Um, I want you to weekly, before I end, end the serve, or the message, I'll tell you what we're going to do the next week, um, what, we're, what scripture we're in. So even if you don't have these 101 scriptures, you can go to that and just read the, the chapter, um, you know, that one is what I usually do is I try to take um, what it's about. I don't always take the whole chapter, but read the whole chapter and then you'll understand where that scripture is and what God's trying to tell you. And then when we get together, then you'll understand more. So 
you know, I try to do my work, you know, and I do try to do the work for you, but you need to do some of your own too, because just hearing people, sometimes we have to do it ourselves to really understand and God will work with you. Oh my goodness. Before I read my Bible, I ask the Holy Spirit to help me to understand what I'm reading, get it down into me and my soul, you know, so I have good understanding of what God is trying to tell me. You know, I can read the same scripture two, three times and get a different meaning out of it, you know, and at that time when I read it, that's usually what I need, you know, so, you know, even though there's three different ways to take it, at, at that time, that's what I need, and that's what God's given me, and that's what I have to learn by. So if you involve him in reading your Bible, it helps so much. You know, it he brings that understanding to you because that's what he's there for. That's what the Holy Spirit's there for, to give us wisdom and understanding. So, um, all right, I'm going to read this, and then after that, we'll go through, um, we'll go, we'll go through it. A Boy Heal. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude around them and the scribes disputing with them. Immediately when he saw them, saw him, all the, or I'm going to say it again. Immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed and running to him, greeted him. And he asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? You know how Jesus, you know, <laughs> I know he said it that way. What are you discussing with them? with them then one of the crowd answered and said teacher i brought you my son who was a, a mute has a mute spirit and wherever it it seizes him and wherever it seizes him it throws him down he foams at the mouth gnashes his teeth becomes rigid so I spoke to your disciples, and they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered him and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him and fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you believe, all things are possible to him who believes. There we are. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw the people, people came running together. He rebuked the unclean spirit, saying, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him, and he became as one dead. So that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. Amen. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? He said to them, This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Okay, so let's go over first, uh, the first, yeah, number 14. And he came to the disciples. He saw the multitudes around them and the scribes disputing with them. So that tells me right there, you know, that the the scribes are like all over the disciples saying, oh, why can't you get him out? You know, what's wrong? What's wrong? You know, I thought you were men of God. You, you know how people will do that to you? You know, say, you know, I thought you were... Christ like you know and you do those things you know why can't you do this and why can't you do that you know why aren't you rich why aren't you you know running around and and you know can tell people every you know tell people things and show them you know why are why do you have troubles you know they question you and that's what these scribes were doing they were questioning the disciples you know and they probably like 
I don't know, we've done this so many times, you know, we've always had, you know, they always come out, the devils always came out, but this one, they couldn't get him out. Okay, so immediately they saw him and all the people were greatly amazed and running to him, greeted him. And he asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? So you know right there, Jesus is not happy. He probably sees them all there down in the, his disciples, you know, these, these men that have walked with him and know him personally, you know, has, you know, seen him do this many times. And um, he wasn't happy. You know, what are you saying to my disciples? You know, I, we always do that. Like, sometimes you think about how people will talk to you. I'm, I'm, I'm a woman of God. You know, God is, don't talk to me that way. You know, we, we get it from other church people, you know. You know, I can't say in our church, but, you know, we've had that done to us. You know, would you talk to Christ like that? Would you say that to Christ? You know, Christ lives within me, so if you're saying it to me, you're saying it to him. You know, and that's basically, I think, what Jesus is telling these scribes. Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son, who has a mute spirit. And wherever it, see, it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples, and they should cast it out, but they could not. Okay, the first part of that, what does that sound like to you? Have you ever had seen someone have an epileptic fit? What does it do? It throws them on the ground. They seize, they move, they, they you know... You know, they turn blue, they're, they, their teeth gnash, they foam with the mouth, they, you know, they can't control it. You know, that's, you know, that, that's a spirit, that's, that's an unclean spirit, you know, trying to hurt this person. You know, God didn't make you like that, you're, you're clean, you know, but this unclean spirit, that's what they do. They, they twist you, they change you, they torture you. The devil, John 10, 10, John, or the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's destroying your life, you know. That's what he tries to do, is to destroy you. Okay, let's get back to this. Um, he answered him and said, O oh, faithless, ge faithless generation. I don't think, I've read this before. Um, how long shall I be with you? You know, how long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. You know, when I read this before, I thought he was saying it to the disciples. You know, like, what's wrong with you? You've done this so many times. You've seen me do it. You know the words to say. You know what to do. You know, I thought he was saying this to, to the disciples. But the Lord showed me today. He was saying it to the people. He was saying it to the scribes. He was saying it to the unbelievers. You know, they've seen him, you know, a faithless generation. You know, that's what they were, faithless, a lot of them. You know, and for them to, that's why he, he said that to them, you know, to the scribes and all them. Faithless generation, you know, how long shall I be with you? You know, he knew he was leaving. They didn't know. But, you know, that's, that's so <laughs> much. Um, I, I really, I'm glad the Lord showed me that that wasn't what it was. Because, you know, I'm a disciple. You know, I've, I've worked, you know, in that part of, of uh, the ministry. And, and I can't always... I have to tell you, you know, there's been some that you, that been hard to get out of people and, you know, and thankfully I have my pastor or someone with me that, you know, helps me or I'll just give it to them. You know, maybe they're discerning something that I'm not see. Um, unbelief will stop people standing around you, not believing, you know, joking about it or, you know, saying, you know, what's up, you know, why, oh yeah, there's no devils in there, you know, what are they doing? You know, that unbelief hurts that part. 
of it, you know, of getting those unclean spirits out. So, you know, I think that's what Jesus is saying, you know, oh, faithfulness, faithfulness, you know. And then 20 is, then they brought him to him, and he saw him immediately, the spirit convulsed him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. Right there tells you that devil knew. He knew he was coming out. He knew that he had no choice. He knew who he was up against. You know, and he just did, he, he just twisted that boy. You know, he thought, I'm going to get all I'm going to get out of him. You know, I don't want to leave. This is my home. You know, that's his tomb. That's that, that unclean spirit. That's where he lived. He didn't want to go. He was going to fight not to go, but he knew, he really knew he had to. So he was going to torture this kid. It shows you right there. You'll see where he tried to kill him. You know, if I can't have him, nobody else can, you know, that part of it. Um, I, I would, was um, seeing a man one time that went through a deliverance. And I'll tell you, it was... Um, it was the worst one I ever seen. This man was so that devil he didn't want to come out. And I'm telling you, this man twisted ways you wouldn't even think could be twisted. His arms twisted in the back in his back, you know, behind his back, right around, you know, his legs, his torso. He just fell on the ground and he was just twisted. It was like no person, you know, only special certain people could do the things that he did. You know, the the twisting and the, his neck got real big, you know, and this is real, people. You know, this is real. A lot of people don't believe in that, but I'm telling you, I've seen it with my own eyes. It is real, you know, and this boy, I have seen people worse than this boy, you know, but... An unclean spirit is unclean spirit. If they don't want to come out, man, it's it's tough, you know. They know this child, you know. They they know what they can get away with. Let's say it that way. So he asked his father, Jesus asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, I'm going to say that again. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. I know Jesus said in his mind, if, 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 you know, that that's almost insulting. You know, this is, you know, he's the Messiah. You, you, you know, people have seen what he could do. That word. If is it's it's really a condemning word. It's a really distrust distrustful word. You're saying that you know if you can, you know that's almost like no, you can't, or you got to prove to me, or you know if is so. When you talk to someone, or let's just say you know, and, and I've seen this and I've done it myself, you know. I've, I've like, I don't know, my, you know, sickness or whatever come on me, you know, or I've been prayed for and, and I think, you know, Lord, if you could own, if you could only, you know, um, if you could only heal me, you know, this finger, if you could only heal it, Lord, what am I saying? You know, if I, if you could only, I know you can. You know, you've proven it to me. You've healed other parts of my body. You've healed so many things. I've seen it before my eyes. And I would say to you, if you can heal my finger, you know, we don't, rec this is where it comes back to the words. We have to recognize what we're saying. We have to recognize and be careful of the things we say. Um, like I said, you know, most of the time you don't even realize you're saying it. Well, when you really consider how important your words are, you will use your words in a different way, you know, and this is because a lot of times when we say, you know, 
it's mistrusting we're not trusting so um that was to me that was insulting to the lord you know if and then he comes right back at him and he says well if you can believe all things are possible to him who believes you know and and that's what everything is about is you know the whole walk is believing and having faith what jesus did he's not before so we can't see it with our eyes but we we have to believe that he's there we have to believe that he's around us see we don't we're not supposed to live by feelings or you know the things we see we're supposed to live by knowing that jesus christ is lord and he does all things and he does all things perfect and if you believe all things are possible to him who believes and that's what we have to get down inside of us you know we have to truly see us you know you'll hear different pastors and saying or people will be saying that you know you have to see yourself um like let's see what can i say just doing something you know okay we used that car before okay i see myself with that mercedes i see myself sitting in that mercedes you know i'm just not saying you know a thing you know god can give it to you but you know, i mean that's that's just a thing but you have to see yourself walking i see myself my words are better you know i see myself increasing in the lord i see my you know i see myself i'll tell you uh years ago i had um i would say it was a vision of um my husband and i you know and pastor um standing on a um stage with thousands and thousands of people with all their hands raised I seen it you know I seen it in that vision and I I, I live on that because I'm gonna see it someday I know I am I'm I know but I know I see myself there I know I'm gonna do it I know I'm gonna see it I know it's gonna be just such a revelation to me when I when I it's just gonna be beautiful because these people are coming to the Lord all these hands raised you know and and that is where i see myself i see myself going um to different churches and speaking you know these things and even though there it's not for me right now i know that it will be someday you know a lot of people will want it right now right now you know lord why is it going to have it why is it no you know we believe i believe and i trust in the lord that it is going to come at the right time in my life you know when i am prepared and you know that's where the trust is you trust in him you trust in him you believe in him that he is going to give it to you at the right time in your life and i don't mean just things you know these cars and houses and no those are things i mean the the things in my i don't want to say the word things but my soul those ways that i know is from god you know he blesses us with things he gives us things but he also gives us grace you know and that's where um you know i i see myself in god's grace i want him to say that he is well pleased with me and that's what i work towards you know and just knowing him and understanding that's why we try i try to get across to you try to get in your bible understand him understand what he did for you understand how much he loves you understand how he wants you to live your life without lying without trying to manipulate without trying to um do the wrong things because you know what they never work out if god is involved it will succeed if he's not you know if it's sin you know when you're lying it's sin you know that's why you have to um change your ways 
That's when we become a new person. We're not that old person anymore. So, um, okay, let's get back to this. Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, I, Lord, believe. Help my unbelief. That is, that scripture right there, that is so meaningful. And truly, I, I believe that we should say that prayer all the time to the Lord. You know, show me my unbelief. You may not like it. And you may say, wow, I didn't even see that, you know, before. But he will reveal it to you. He will reveal where you have that unbelief. He will show you where that is in your life. You know, in your words, in your thinking. You know, even you say, I can't believe I did that, you know. That's wrong. You shouldn't be saying that. Or, I don't care. Yeah, you do care. You you know, we're not supposed to carry our cares. We're supposed to give all our cares to him. You know, there's so many words out there that you don't even know that we're using. That's why he will reveal them to you. That's why you should pray that prayer. Show me, Lord, my unbelief. You know, show me. The things I do, you know, that I'm saying wrong. Show me my unbelief, Lord. And he will show it to you. Be ready. And, you know, and try to change it. You know, a lot of times he, he doesn't expect you right away to change it. But see, like I said before, once you know it, you're accountable for it. And this should change your way of thinking and the way you're speaking. Okay, so... um when Jesus saw the people came running, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, you come out of him and enter him no more. See, a lot of spirits will leave, and then your words will bring them right back in, or your actions. If you go back to the old way of living, or the old way of saying things, um, you can bring them right back in. But see, this was a child. And Jesus said, you come into him no more. And that spirit, he had to leave. He had to leave, and he knew it. He knew it, and he knew he couldn't come back. So what does he do? He goes searching for somebody else. You know, you be careful. And, um, and that, then the unclean, then the spirit cried out. Okay, so you don't think they cry out? You don't think they talk? Believe me. They talk. I've heard them. You know, when I went through my deliverance, I could actually hear a growling, growling within me. You know, you can believe me or not, but I heard it. I could just a uh, horrible. And I heard this voice in me saying, you know, the pastor was in by me. And this voice said to me, and my eyes moved. My head didn't move, but my eyes moved. And as he was walking, yeah, he was walking across the kitchen or something, and my eyes moved, and I heard this growling, and I heard, I hate you, you know, and it was like, and, and I love the man, you know, he is, he's my pastor, you know, he helped me and my husband so much, we love him, you know, as a pastor, as a friend, you know, as a brother in the Lord, and for me to say, you know, I hate you, you know, to hear that, I knew there was something in there that had to come out. He didn't want to, but believe me, he came out. Um, you know why? I truly, when I heard that, I wasn't scared, but I knew this was true, and I knew he had to go, and he was going, because I wasn't, he wasn't living within me. You know, I, I, I'm a child of God now, and I'm not, I'm not dealing with it. He's got to go. All right, so then, um, and then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him. And he became as one dead, so that many said, he is dead. Like I told you before, the enemy comes to kill, steal and destroy 
He destroyed this little boy's life. He tried to drown him. He threw him in fire. He had to, he tried to scar him. Well, I'm sure he scarred him. You know, he tried to kill him. Here again, he tried to kill him. You know, that's all the enemy knows. Kill, steal, and destroy. And that's what he came to do. And that's what he tried to do. But he didn't, he didn't do it. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. Awesome. So then Jesus took, took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. Amen. Um, everybody had to be cheering and saying, oh my goodness, look at him. You know, um, the boy had to be such a release. It had to be, you know, where am I? Who am I? You know, it had to be such a, because that thing controlled him. For a long time, the father said, since childhood, it doesn't really say how old he was, but it controlled him for a long time, you know, and now he's got to learn to live a new life now. And it had to be such a release and the father had to be, you know, imagine him having to watch over him all the time. And when he came, he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, this kind, see that's, that's the key words, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. There's different, there's different levels of demons and devils. You know, there's different levels there. And this one, he was, he was a tough one. But you know what? <laughs> Jesus got him out. The name of Jesus we use that name of Jesus. They got to flee. We have that power and authority. And once you know that, and once you practice it, and once you, you um, live it, they got to go. They have no choice. You know, so this, this was a lot about um, trusting in the Lord, believing in Him, understanding our beliefs in Him. And if, and like I said, the prayer use that prayer you know lord show me my own belief because if we're trying to strive to be you know perfect in the lord you know i can't say anybody's perfect but we're trying if you strive to be perfect you know no one no one is perfect but if you strive to that you're increasing you're getting closer and closer all the time you know so start doing that ask him lord show me my own belief and like i said he will Okay, so I hope you were blessed today by this, and um, hope you understood what I said. And if you have any questions, you know, go on Facebook. We'll answer your questions. Um, I I love to do this weekly. This is a blessing to me. It increases me, and I hope it increases you. Um, so you have a blessed week, and you stay strong, and know that, you know. Trust in the Lord. He's going to get you through this. You know, believe in him and all things are possible. All things. I mean, he, all things. <laughs> so seek that and seek the understanding of that scripture too from the Lord. He will, he will show it to you in the way that you need to see it. So um, I hope you have a blessed week and we will see you next Wednesday around 7 p.m. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be all over you today and give you peace and health and wealth and prosperity and wisdom and knowledge of his will. Lord, I thank you today for all the people listening and watching, watching Father. Bless them. You know, bless them with your peace and your understanding, Lord, in Jesus' holy name. And everybody says, Amen. Have a blessed day.